It started off so adult, so good, college, talking about, you know, the dark thoughts and all of this stuff, mystery, thriller, to slowly, slowly, not getting a romance, we're gonna talk about it, slowly going back to teen romances of 2010. Hey guys, it's Kennedy and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing a Ninth House by Leigh Bardugo book review. If you do not know what this book is about, this is about a girl who is in the dumps of her life. She has this ability where she's able to see the dead and it kind of ruins her life in a bit. She has traumatic things happen to her so she kind of goes into drugs and alcohol and bad business to kind of get away from all of it. When something really bad happens, she ends up getting a proposition by university, Yale University, to then join their high society life in return for her gifts. And that is where the story tumbles off of her and her new life in Yale and with all of these societies. For my non-spoilery section, I just read it, like literally just finished it, and I still don't know and can comprehend how I feel about it. Personally, I think there wasn't enough character development and I didn't really like the style of the layout of how it was written. It was written beautifully but the layout of of how the story beginning middle and end went I'm not all that thrilled about I'm also not thrilled about where it left off and I don't necessarily care about the main character but I care about the other technically main character and it's kind of getting a 2.53 stars for me I think the only reason why I got through kind of the boring middle portion is because this is a library book as you can see and I have to go back today and I I was only halfway through it, less than halfway through it, by last night. So I had to finish it all pretty much today. And that's the only reason that pushed me to get through it fast, because I had to return it fast. So I think it's going to get maybe a three stars if I'm rounding up. I like the idea. The beginning was pretty interesting because I didn't know exactly the world and what was going on. Just wish the story had a different timeline wise, because I feel like the timeline should have been different. If you're looking for something dark, but it does have a trigger warning warning for sexual assault. If that is one of your triggers, please do not read this book or go in with that knowledge. It does have some of that in it. But if you're looking for something dark with, and you like, um, like ghosts and magical realism type books, this is probably for you. And if you don't mind a slow pace and not as much payoff in the end, but are willing to wait and wait for books, like this is definitely a book for you. While I don't mind a slow pace and payoff, I don't think it just wasn't the payoff I was looking for personally. So I've read the Six of, Six of Crows duology by her and I absolutely love that duology. I did compare a little bit of the, at least the character development to that book and it does not even compare. I have not read the full Shadow and Bone trilogy so I don't know all of her works but comparing it to that duology I do believe I like that duology better. However, I am intrigued by this book and will continue on with her next book in this series because I am intrigued on what happens. Other than that, the next part will be spoilery so if you want your spoilery thoughts or have read the book continue on watching okay people I'm gonna put this beautiful cover down and talk about the book she is an addict and she finally gets off of being an addict which I didn't mind I don't mind a problematic character Alex Stern her name's Galaxy my favorite character by far was Darlington though I'm not sold on the name Darlington I still liked his character the best. The timeline. I mentioned the timeline earlier about this book. The timeline is so weird in this book because it's like you go back to before she got into the university, during the university, during when Darlington was alive, after Darlington is gone and dead. I really wish that it was just two perspectives of her like with Darlington and without Darlington if they were going to go back in time with just some flashbacks of her thinking about the time before she was at the university. I really don't think we needed all of that beforehand of when she was not at the university. I don't think it was needed. I think it was just fluff. A lot of the uh, society talk was excruciatingly painful to read. I cared about some of it, but when they started going off on tangents of all this university stuff, I just really could not care less because I didn't A, go to the school, B, I didn't know where anything was, and C, I didn't matter. It really did not matter unless they were in that society for like that ritual. Like it didn't matter to 
give us all of that information for me to forget all that information and to like kind of say it again but like shorter and more understandable when they are in like a society. I think Leigh Bardugo went to Yale so you can tell that she has so much pride and knows a lot about it and cares about her school but the thing is is that not everybody cares when it doesn't pertain directly into the story and the places while it probably cared to her that they were like all right and sanctuary and all of this stuff to us it did not matter so I don't think it was needed. The character development in here was existent but then non-existent at the same time. While we got to know where the characters came from during and like kind of after it it was just telling us what happened. There wasn't like that growth aspect, I feel like. Alex Stern's personality didn't really resonate with me. I don't know what her personality was. Like stubborn, that's the only thing I can really come out of it, stubborn, but like stubborn with like Turner. So yeah, Darlington was my favorite character because I felt a little bit more growth with him because his flashbacks with his family and like his grandfather's story and all that, like I felt a little bit more connection with him, but the rest I couldn't, like I think I even cared more about Dawes than I did about her, Alec. Although I did think Dawes was a guy for like the first 50 pages. We go on, she's training with Darlington on like the rituals, which I actually thought were very interesting. And I wish there would have been more of the training part with Darlington and like leading up to when he was gone. I feel like that would have made a way better verse book if they woven in that murder aspect of Tara before with Darlington and having Darlington on a different wavelength of figuring out the girls and gone missing and Sando and her learning how to the rituals and how to become a Dante like together and having just their different perspectives during that same timeline and then ending with Dawes going missing. I feel like that would have been such a better book. The second book could have been all about her story, figuring out who killed maybe another girl or something happened to woven in, where Darlington went and all of that stuff it could have been a separate book because there was just so many elements thrown into this with learning about the societies, the ghost aspect, her trauma with the ghosts. Darlington missing, this whole murder mystery thriller thing, her trying to be a good friend and college student and her mom, like there was like five different storylines going in and only a few making it to the end where it was an actually like kind of satisfying ending. In the end she learns that Sando is the one that's been killing all of these people and consuming their souls? with that other person who is taking over souls and going into a different body every time. Yeah? Am I right? I don't know. I read it so fast that it's one of those things where it's like when the ending scene was happening I was kind of just like wait I'm so confused. The sexual assault part, that chapter with it, I was reading it at work and I was like ooh probably need to take a second because it was just so awful and horrifying although I don't know why her being I don't it's just one of those things where it's like was it needed within this course of the story because she could have been afraid of the ghosts without having that underlining of sexual assault but I get it whatever I don't know what else to say it was just okay the characters were okay. The main thing I liked about it was the ritual part, which they do go into a little bit, but is there a romance between Alex and Darlington? Or is Dawes in love with Darlington? I was kind of just hoping for a, a little beacon of romance of hope between Darlington and Alex before he died. And there was a teensy teensy bit of like him going into that society and looking in that mirror and the mist and he like had all these like sexual thoughts or I couldn't really understand like he tried to like come on to Alex and all this type of stuff and was it did it actually happen like I the whole thing just confuses me and I would love to have gotten more of an explanation instead of just saying like oh magic and societies so why you need to be careful it's like can you tell me and lay it out exactly how it happened and how to not have it happen again so that I know for my future like I don't I just wish there was more explanation and I just that was like the most interesting parts is when they were going off to these different societies and pro and like being that protocol person for all of these rituals I just like would have liked a more of a layout but not in the info dumpy way that she was doing it because she was doing all of this info dumping. I liked, I would have rather have like seen like maybe there's like 
a month where all of these societies had to do a ritual and they were going to each one. And I know it was kind of like that, but it was kind of like spread out and sporadic of like when they went to the ritual stuff in the flashbacks in between and lining with the other ones. Like I said, I think my big problem with this book was the timeline. The timeline had been would have been better. The character development would have been better. I think the romance, if there is a romance, would have been so much more outlined. It would have been like that slow burn and right now it's just a burn. It's not, it's like, it's just slow. It's, it's like a slow-ish not even burn because you don't even know if they're together or if they're like each other or with each other and I just I don't know what they are and so that whole guessing game is not what I'm about. I want things to be like lined for me. Should I be shipping them? Should I be waiting for that? It never came in this book and if it doesn't come in the next book I'm gonna we all knew Darlington wasn't dead. Like, he wasn't dead. This whole world of magic, he's not dead. But when they try and go get him out the first time, it doesn't work because Sando's in on the deal, whatever. And then they call to him again and then they realize, or she realizes, that he's a demon now? This is where when I said that these timelines came into fruition and some of them weren't as satisfying, that one was definitely not satisfying. And the last freaking line she says, I will read it to you. The last line she says is, and I quote, so she said, as the wind picked up, shaking the new leaves on their branches, moaning over the gravestones like a mourner lost to grief, who's ready to go to hell? I think I was just flashed back to early 2010s during all of the vampire ghost love stories I've ever read. It started off so adult, so good, college, talking about, you know, the dark thoughts and all of this stuff, mystery, thriller, to slowly, slowly, not getting a romance, we're gonna talk about it, slowly going back to teen romances of 2010. Like, why do we have to go to hell? I was so ready just to stay in our world with magic and societies, but now we gotta go to hell? And I'm not even gonna talk about the whole North plot line, which was not good. I really did not enjoy that plot, that whole timeline of just him going to find those girls in the veil of the in-between. Like, can we just get a book that has to deal with like the in between but like have it not be not having to go anywhere but our world like is that I think it's too much to ask I think it's too much to ask overall I pride Lee Bardugo for doing it and you know trying it she she tried it can't really falter for that she tried it did it land for some people, I think so. For others, will I continue on? Yes. Why? Because I'm trash and if the first book has such a beautiful cover, I only assume the second book will have a beautiful cover. So, also, Darlington's my favorite character and he's probably going to be in the next book as a demon. And if we're following the trend of early 2010s where this left off, that means that he's going to be a dark demon with a sarcastic element and he's going to try and come on to Alex 20 million times. They're going to do it as a demon and then he's going to undemon it and then it's going to be like Vampire Academy. In the third book, which I assume there'll be a third book, is that uh, they'll fall in love again and she'll be like, it didn't matter, I loved you anyway and it's okay, even if you weren't yourself, I loved you. That kind of thing. That kind of thing. You know what I mean? So, 2.5? out of five stars. Eh. Mm. Could have been better, could have been worse. The timeline was just screwed up, but she tried. I hope you enjoyed this weird book talk. Like I said, I'm still kind of coming off a high of it. It was okay. I like this atmosphere. Yeah, so like and subscribe if you want more content from me, and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye guys.